Good evening, this is Monica from RDA Media. Tonight I have a story about Tom and Cathy who are currently in hotel quarantine in Melbourne. I think incorrectly detained. Uh, we shouldn't have been hotel quarantine, quarantined at all. I'm a hairdresser and I've got a hair salon and yeah, I've had to cancel my client. There's a guard outside our room and if we step outside of the door, we get fined $20,000. Tom and Cathy changed their plans specifically to not have to be hotel quarantined. They were not in any red zones whatsoever. They even got a test before arriving in Melbourne so that they could show DHHS staff. Tom and Cathy want to share their story with you about the DHHS confusion, um, the, the way that they're treated in hotel quarantine and how they found themselves in quarantine even though they did everything they could to avoid it. Here's their story. The, the most interesting thing about your story, um, Tom and Cathy, is that you did the right thing according to the government's rules and regulations. You crossed the border when you were supposed to. You even voluntarily yeah. got tests done, which came back negative, um, yeah, so yeah. that you could show any airport staff who, or DHHS who had to see it that you've, you've actually voluntarily gotten a test and it's negative. It seems yeah. like you did everything that you could and you still got stuck in hotel quarantine. And just, just, just for the viewers to see, um, you know, a lot of people in my audience um, don't think that COVID is as bad as they say it is, but you actually, you are, you do think COVID is bad and that's why you, you took the test yeah. and you did everything yeah. that you're supposed to do. But even someone like you um, mm. still thinks it's ridiculous that you're in hotel quarantine based on yeah. where you were. The, the, the system doesn't seem to be you know, um, yeah, adequate to, uh, you know, to just the standard process. It, I mean, when we showed them our our, um, our COVID tests being negative, I would have thought that online somewhere the government would have results of that. But when we got here, they said, oh, that doesn't count. That doesn't count because the states don't talk to each other or something. The, the systems don't match up. It's individual states have their own systems. Yeah, but um, a negative test is a negative test. I mean, yeah, aren't they reliable right. in every state? I mean... Well, then they wanted evidence that we'd left on the 31st. That, And I said, well, we crossed the Story Bridge. Tried to get onto the car hire company. There was a bit of a kerfuffle there that they couldn't give me the evidence. Tried to get onto my bank to produce uh, um, credit card receipts because we bought stuff on that trip just over the bridge at a 7-Eleven. Couldn't come. Anyway, as I said, we were one of the last to be interviewed. Time ran out. They rang their supervisor and they just said um, quarantine, well, quarantine them because they, they had another flight coming or more, they had to go on to somewhere else. So we were basically, through, for expediency's sake, they thought the safest option was to just quarantine us. And we thought that we would then be interviewed or somehow they'd just sort it out later because that's what they said to us. They said, we'll sort it out. First, we're going to get you into the hotel so you can be you know, comfortable. We'll sort it out for you. But no, nothing's happened. Nothing at all, really. And um, as I said, I got this text message saying that I can go two days ago. They've been able; to, they've not been able to come back to me with any sort of response in regard to that. Kathy told me before we, um, you know, went on air that she's been trying to get some medical attention, and and it's been very difficult. Kathy, do you want to explain that to us a little bit? Uh, yeah, I've I've been diagnosed with osteoarthritis and. And it's getting worse and I really need to go home and see my own doctor and have some blood tests, um, you know, because I'm in pain every morning. I can't walk. I'm swollen all my feet and my hands. And all I can all they can do is give me a doctor to talk to me on the phone and send me Panadol and Nurofen. And they sent me Nurofen yesterday and all my feet are bleeding internally now. So they told me don't take that anymore. And that's all we can do. So they can't come to see you to give you a consultation, no. even if no. they were wearing, you know, masks and gloves, they can't come to see you? No, no doctor can come in. And when they do our um, COVID test, the nurses come, but we have to open the door and stand in our room and they, then they give us a test. Stand in the doorway, basically. Stand in the doorway. They don't, nobody comes in the room. Mm. Now, do you think, you know, are you feeling any symptoms? Do, do you think you're contagious with COVID? No. We, we've had three tests and we're negative. I don't mind quarantine if I can do it, at, you know, if we could have done it at home, not pay out all this money to pay for stuff that we're not happy with. Mm, exactly. 
You know, I could have been at home and... It, it sounds great to be staying in a five-star hotel with one-star service, though. That's the problem. The hotel prices are, are exorbitant. The meals that they deliver are inadequate and, like, they're cold. They're, you know, there, there are health rules and regulations that determine what temperature you serve hot food at, what temperature you serve and store cold food at and that sort of thing. And when it gets to the room here, it's cold or at the best, lukewarm at the best, but um, quite often it's cold. See, so we tried to buy our own groceries, mm-hmm. but the police out the front, where well, there was apparently there was a big influx or a, what do they call it? There was a busy period. They just told the delivery guy to go away and come back later. So the delivery guy did come back later. Then um, uh, it was taking too long and like, if you're running a business of groceries, delivery, you're not going to wait around all day. So they, they left and they re- rang me back and refunded the money and everything, but we didn't get our groceries. Okay, so you're at the mercy of what they provide you for breakfast, lunch, dinner and snacks. Um, exactly and, right. and it doesn't seem like they're quite up to par. Um, and, no. and, they don't, and you don't even have a microwave in there, is that correct? That's right. We weren't allowed to have one. We were allowed to buy one if we wanted to. Uh, at our expense and have it um, delivered, but we weren't prepared to do that, just buy a microwave oven. Of a, yeah. you know. They just brought in this, you know, traffic light border permit situation. Now, based on yeah. how you've been treated um, and processed, do you think that DHHS has the capability to, to process these people correctly? Well, it seems that they're being over, overloaded because uh, quite often you'll ring you know, through the, the hotel lobby, they put you through to the um, authorised officers and there's no answer. It goes to a recorded message, and, you know, and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Then you ring them again in another couple of hours and you, sometimes you get through. And hmm. do they get back to you? Do you... Well, not as not the way you would like. I mean, I, I had to, this morning I did that. Every morning I've been ringing them to find out if we can at some stage through the day leave. And uh, the last two mornings they've been recorded messages and then I ring them again like an hour or so later and uh, then get through to them. All right. Well, thank you so much for talking to me, Kathy and Tom. And yeah. I, I hope that you can uh, get out soon and, uh, mm. you know, get, get some money back for all the money you've spent, hopefully. Governments all over Australia have been making big changes on a whim this whole year. Have they actually thought about what these changes mean to the individual person or to the business? I wonder if they think that the whole country is just one person. It's not. We are all individual people with different circumstances. There are so many stories of people being stuck all over Australia trying to get home to feed their animals or trying to get their children back from their grandparents' house across the border. It's all good and well to make changes that you think are in the health and and safety of of the nation, but you've got to think about the implications to the individual person. The new border permit system for Victoria The processing of that is unbelievable and I know for a fact that DHHS do not get back to people because they're so busy. The amount of people coming and going to Melbourne every day for business, leisure and family reasons must be a huge amount of people. Can they really process them all and give them the adequate attention that they deserve? I worry that maybe they can't and people are getting missed or getting falsely quarantined like Tom and Kathy. I wonder if DHHS know who Tom and Kathy are or if Daniel Andrews knows that people are being quarantined for no reason whatsoever. Tom and Kathy did the right thing. They got tested. They followed the rules. They did everything and still they're having to lose maybe over $5,000 staying in a hotel that they don't want to be in. I wonder, can the government sustain this type of control? Can they sustain the processing that it takes to monitor and track people the way that they are? I guess we'll have to wait and see.